And you all thought you were getting Tori. Tori, you just keep getting bumped today. Hey, um, as people are uh, just starting to trickle in, I thought it would be a great way to transition from a crazy day of sessions to be here with uh, George Hotz, uh, who has been leading some of the, the open source side of computer vision, the open source side of autonomous driving, and just thinking about the entire space. So, George, can you just start out sharing a little bit about what you've been building at Comma and why you started building this? Um, so if we want self-driving cars, uh, the automakers aren't going to do it. They're not really structurally capable. You might get a Waymo in the world, um, but if you really want to see, uh, and our slogan is ghost riding for the masses, you gotta, <laughs> seriously, you got to build a cheap device you could stick in a car, you plug it in, and then it drives itself. Now you might think this is impossible. It's hard, but it's not impossible. So wait, when did, when did, you, when did you start this? You, you, originally, you originally put out, your first launch was all open source, right? Yep. Uh, no hardware at first, then a little bit of hardware with Panda? So our first launch was open source hardware. You open source the entire spec? We, we open source the spec to build the hardware. We open source the code that runs on the phone, except for one little part. Um, you got to have some secrets. But uh, yeah. yeah, we open source a system that you could install on your supported Honda or Toyota, connect it, and you could let go of the steering wheel, the gas, and the brakes, and it'll drive. So wait, how, uh, when, when did you take funding? Oh, we took uh, 2016. And your, your investors were cool with uh, all the radical open source work? Well, I control the board and I'm the majority shareholder. Is that exactly? We got more investment from the same people, though, so you know, they must not have been too mad. <laughs> um, hey, how big is the team now? Uh, 15. Amazing. I've uh, been following you a lot on Twitter recently. Uh, what started as an open source spec, you then started selling, what, Panda for $89. I could plug into the OBD2 port. Since raised to 99, shop.com.ai. Uh, everybody should actually go to the shop because you've been adding to it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you now have an entire device that you can buy yeah. with the craziest casing around it for cooling. Can you talk around, like, are you, are you doing more software? Are you doing more hardware? Well, so every one of those devices connects to the Comma AI network. And I'll tell you what the Comma AI network is. We have 4 million miles of 20 plus FPS video from cars. Everybody else, Mobileye, Mapbox's Vision SDK, um, is sending back compressed forms of the road that are after feature extraction. We're sending the video back so we can do feature extraction with huge neural nets on our servers. Um, so yeah, every one of these devices connects to, connects to our network and, and contributes data. And I'll tell you what we're going to do with the data. Um, you can divide mapping companies, not Mapbox. So Mapbox is, is, is hosted MySQL for maps, is my understanding of it. And it's a great business to be in. You win with this business. Um, I'll tell you who doesn't win. And some of you all might be out there right now. Everybody who is spending money to, etro to retrofit like survey vans. Here, TomTom, Tom, DeepMap. These companies that are spending millions of dollars on fleets to generate one map and hope that they're going to rent seek on the map in the future. They have to pay for each car they add to their network. On the other side, you have us, Tesla, and Mobileye. We get paid for every car that adds to the network, and they all make maps. So what, what motivates people to actually install your devices? How, why are people recording this much video for you? Because you want to, be, you want to experience the future. Watch my, watch my TechCrunch desktop talk. But seriously, how do you create the incentives to create a community? Um, well, it's exciting. And that's pretty much it. If you build something that's exciting, people show up. Want to throw a good party? Make it exciting. You got four million miles just because people wanted to be a part of building. Oh, well, you get points. And you can have like a little leaderboard and talk about how you have more points than other people. It's very, it's very uh, uh, persuasive. So why aren't, more, why aren't more people doing this? I mean, you, you, you started off saying a lot of people aren't doing this right. I don't know. I mean, look, Mobileye's come around a lot, right? Um, Mobileye has pivoted from a, we don't care about autonomous driving, we want to sell our little chips, 2.5 watts, to eh, anti-hype, right? That's one of our slogans on Twitter, too. <laughs> anti-hype, you know? Uh, what can we expect in the next, uh, next couple months from y'all? 
Um, so if you guys in the next two months release a viewer for your V3 and the V3 mm -hmm. spec, we will commit to using it for our open source uh, highway HD maps by the end of the year. Um, we have all the data already ready. We're just refining the processing algorithm, finding bugs, and we are going to open source every lane line and every, like, basically every path that a car can drive on of every interstate highway in America. This is TomTom's entire offering. This is what Usher just got $12 million in investment for. We're going to give it away for free. Not ODBL, M MIT license. I don't care. I hate intellectual property. <laughs> um, we're going to so, give it away. So wait, how, how are you going to make money doing this? Because well, you, you just listed a couple of other companies that, that are making money. Well, are they making money? I don't know. Maybe they're making sketchy backroom development deals. I'll tell you exactly how we make money. Go to shop.com.ai. You can buy a Panda for $99, or you can buy an Eon for $699. Um, <laughs> so let, let's, you, you open source the data. You put, you put it out there. Yeah. MIT, you don't care what people do, do with this. Sure. How does that, how does that benefit, how does that benefit comma? Ah, how does it benefit comma? Narrative shaping. The real way you win as a company, and I'm big on winning, is culture. Right? I don't want to live in the, in the here, Tom Tom, uh, you know, secret, sketchy, backroom deal world. And I don't think that's the world that's going to play out. I think the world that's going to play out is a lot more open. And I think it's a much cooler world. That's what I'm here to make. Hey. Blake, you're in back. You're, you're working on uh, the vector tiles uh, specification. <laughs> uh, George, uh, George is saying if you can get this done in two months, how, how does that feel? Uh, well, it feels great being you know, called on from... <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, everybody should, uh, should catch up with Blake's talk, uh, talk a little later. No, I mean, what, the, the, one of the reasons... We, um, one of the reasons I wanted to get, uh, get you up on stage today and talk is because you, you, you have that effect of walking in and saying, no, this is just not being done right. Just because this is our paradigm of owning data to date, yeah. that doesn't mean that makes any sense. And you're starting to change the notion of where value is in a company. So my question to you is, where is, where is your value going to be in comma over the next year? Oh, growth. You, you put out the data. Um, so there's fundamentally two ways you can view the world. Here, here's a pie. Right? And you could be like, well, as a company, I want to get more of the pie. And this is a very old way to view the world. Um, in today's hyper growth, how many years till the singularity world? Um, I'm still a believer. Uh, the, the way that you get new value is you, you expand the pie. Right? How many things could use HD maps? Well, a whole lot more if it's free and MIT licensed. Right? Think about all the lawyers you can now fire because you don't even have to worry about, <laughs> oh, well, am I violating the licensing agreement? I and mean, that's the real problem. It's that business transaction cost that I'm trying to destroy. Having recently done a black duck audit, you know, I, I fully appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I hope nobody in this room has had to experience that hell. Um, what do you think is going to happen in the industry? You're sharing a little bit about what's, uh, what's going on over the next, next couple months. Uh, who, what other players do you think are going to be winning here? You just said really kind things about Mobileye. Yep. Uh, they continue to be crushing it, yeah. uh, crushing it even while going through uh, a fairly complex integration process with, with Intel. Uh, what, are, what are your predictions on Mobileye? What are your predictions so, on Tesla? I was wrong on Mobileye. I was wrong. I used to say bad things about Mobileye. I was really wrong. And here's what I got wrong. I looked at like, um, you know, the, the, the autopilot system built into the Mercedes. And I was like, why is this garbage, right? At first, I thought it was a technical problem. I thought they couldn't build something as good as Tesla autopilot. And then you realize that it's not a technical problem. It's a procedural, legal, and kind of structural problem. Mobileye actually shipped a pretty good product. It was the integration engineers that failed at turning it into anything. Tesla Autopilot V1 used Mobileye, and it was probably the right choice. Elon's a smart guy. So wait, wait, wait. If it's a structural problem in regards to how people integrate and build cars, yeah. how are you going to fix that? Oh, well, so we don't work with the car manufacturers. We work with the car manufacturers' products. Yeah. Right? So our system works on Honda and Toyota cars. I've never contacted Honda or Toyota. We buy a Honda car and we make our system work with it. Because working with the car is a much easier system to work with than the organization. <laughs> That's a lot of class. I think everybody in this room has actually done business with the auto space, which, yeah. uh, which I fully appreciate that. Um, are you going to stay fully aftermarket? No, 
Um, so the way that you do this, and look, it's an obvious plan, right? Um, there's some amount of people who will install something in their car. We liken this. We want to make our product as easy to use as uh, can you put a GPU in your computer, right? Um, and, you know, there's a whole lot of people that can do this. But then you move your way up the value chain. We're, get your way into dealerships, right? Uh, aftermarket new. So I don't know if you call that aftermarket. But no, user installation will capture a certain segment of the market. Aftermarket new really starts. It's much easier to work with dealerships than it is to work with uh, car manufacturers. Right, because they do, they do the installation and, uh, and, and the setup. Yeah, and you can talk to these guys. They, like, want to make money. Um, other biggest winners coming up in the space, whether startups are established. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I'm a big fan of what you guys are doing. Anybody who's like, anybody who's figuring out how to contribute in an open way to the value chain. It doesn't matter, don't worry about rent seeking. Rent seeking's not the future. Figure out how to open, figure out how to get users, figure out how to get growth, and then you have value, right? I mean, that's, let's look, look at Uber. Does Uber have value? They don't make any money, but they have a huge value, right? Figure out how to get users, figure out how to grow. So who's going to be winners in the space? Um, Tesla, uh, OTA. OTA is key. Uh, versus, you know, you're shipping out. Also, look at the size of their processors. Mm -hmm. Audi is shipping out some big processors. That's good. Um, companies that are shipping out small processors, well, why? And when, when do you think that starts kicking in? When do you think people in this room are going to start making buying decisions based on the processors? Oh, already. Cars are a piece of consumer electronics. Have you been to CES recently? Yeah. Oh, and the terrible thing about this is depreciation is going to skyrocket. You already see it on like Nissan Leafs and stuff. Oh, they're, they're worth it. How so? Because when you think of a car as a piece of consumer electronics, phones depreciate insanely fast. Um, well, has anybody actually graphed that? Because most people like to say, hey, you know, the average, what is it, nine years? For a car. For a car. How long you own a car. Yeah. And so now what you're basically saying is, wait, that, that depreciation curve, that value to you yeah. is going to be dropping because when? Because there is no difference between a 2008 and a 2010 Honda Civic. There's a big difference between a 2008 and a 2010 phone. Yeah. Right? And both of them are unusable. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to start to see this. We're going to start to see depreciation scare up. But, you know... If you can figure out how to separate the consumer electronics value in the car from the piece of metal in the car with, say, an add-on system, well, you, you, you win. How, uh, what, what's the earliest model year your stuff can work with? Uh, I think we go back to the 2016 Civic. Fascinating. Yeah. But all the, every Toyota is supported now, for the I, most part. Do you see, is your main focus in, in regards to expanding to more, uh, more manufacturers or what? Our main focus is making a better system. Uh, I've committed on Twitter that we are going to open source all the highway maps by the end of the year, and we are going to be better than GM Super Cruise. <coughs> it, better how so? Um, so Super Cruise is quite good. What they have very few of is unplanned disengagements, mm -hmm. meaning the car makes a mistake, gave you no warning, and then like, does something bad. These are like the, think of the two autopilot deaths that were very, uh, you know, notorious. Um, the one where the guy hit the truck and the one where the guy hit the barrier, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are unplanned disengagements. So, Avoid you, those. So, so, so when you say better, you mean concretely, mathematically, disengagements from the system that you can go head to head with GM yep. Super Cruiser. Yep, and we'll, we'll hopefully be releasing some quite good comparison statistics. Um, head-to-head -head videos. I bought a Cadillac CT6. I've got to use it for something, right? The depreciation on that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, any advice? You got a lot of people in this room that, uh, that are running their own, uh, own companies, starting their own ideas. Uh, you've done this. Uh, you, you've been running your own show for a second. Uh, not as long as you. Um, uh, figure out how to create value. Don't worry about rent seeking. <laughs> uh, uh, lastly, what are you most excited about outside of what your company is doing right now? Like, what are the tangentials in this space? I think one of the interesting parts for me of just, you know, the, today and looking at the different, different sessions, uh, there are some very, very distant communities that are all coming together here. Uh, yeah, what, what, what's getting you excited outside the car space right now that actually affects your work in the car space? Oh, and I mean, like, it's nice how it's going into a hype winter, but deep learning is still amazing. And people are like, oh, it's 2018, oh, deep learning. We don't say that anymore. You heard of blockchain? Um, 
Uh, yeah, but no, AI and the solution to self-driving cars, I think, will also be the solution to replacing a lot of other jobs, too. A lot. Um, George, thank you for coming up. Uh, we're going to be downstairs having some drinks later. Uh, if you liked uh, like this presentation by George, I highly recommend you follow him on Twitter. Uh, you will occasionally get a notification saying George is on Periscope now. Tune in, and uh, you can get this live anytime of night. Hey, George, thank cool. you very much. Thanks hey, for having me. Cheers. Thank you, everybody.